Hello and welcome to a special edition of the In The Money Players podcast. This is our Del Mar Fall Meet Preview Show. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker. Once again, one of the things that makes me not that depressed at the end of Breeders' Cup is the opportunity to get out to Del Mar again. I want to ask some general questions about the meet. I want to dive in to an interesting looking late pick five on opening day with today's guest. First, we will bring her in. You hear her on these airwaves all the time. Actually, both these guests you hear on these airwaves all the time. To be fair, um, they co-host the fabulous Owner's Box. Really cool edition <laughs> of that about to drop on your timelines as well. But we'll bring in first a woman who never tires of uh, mocking me and had a lot of fun working with her at the draw at the Breeders' Cup. She is Michelle You, Michelle, how are things? Oh, well, Pete, I, I would be looking good if my shirt was as tight as yours. <laughs> what, why are his cheeks so like red the, also? I don't know. Why is his shirt so tight? <laughs> what is going on? I, it's, I'm, so, I'm so muscular from the workout that I just did. And the other oh. voice you hear, you recognize him. You hopefully recognize that fantastic hat that he's wearing from a horse we love to talk about on these airwaves. Gold flipping Phoenix yeah. from Little Red Feather. He is Billy Koch. Billy, what's going on? Nothing much, Pete. I'm very excited to be back at Del Mar. It's beautiful down here. The weather is incredible. I know you're sweating up there wherever you are, but uh, it is so nice down here. It's nice to be back, and I'm looking forward to a big fall meet. Wherever I am, you don't recognize the Brooklyn Bunker by now, Billy? Come on. I I, I don't know. I didn't even know it was in Brooklyn. I thought you you could make that up. How do I know where you are? I've we been to your do Saratoga our, we place. We don't do our show on video. Yeah, well, we don't go. know. Michelle, I forgot to tell you, though. I love the new short hair. Thank you. It's cute. It it's is very really cute. great. It is great. It's very sophisticated. You look very, you look more. Uh, it's just phenomenal. It's great. Thank you. You're welcome. It's be, it's beautiful. You you is that the whole show? We're here. We're gonna we're gonna talk about Michelle's hair and Pete's rosy cheeks. That that might be all we do on the show. Right? We have, too tight. It'd be we have amazing. far too much ground to cover to go too far down that <laughs> rabbit hole. We are going to talk about this opening day sequence. Obviously, opening day of the fall meet. Not exactly opening day of the summer meet, is it? But it is still, you know, for horse racing fans, something to, to get excited about. But before we get to that, I want to talk to you guys about general things you might be expecting at this fall meet, whether that's, um, gosh, it could, be, it could be almost anything. It could be uh, a track trend you've seen in past years. It could be a, a jockey you're particularly looking forward to wager on, a barn you think might be getting hot at the right time. Michelle, we'll start with you just for a, a general preview thought as we head into this uh, Bing Crosby meet out at uh, Del Mar. I mean, for me, anytime we go to Del Mar, I always look at Peter Miller. Uh, I think that he just does exceptionally well down there. So I always give his horses extra credence. And I think we saw from the summer meet that Phil D'Amato is not to be ignored. Um, and, you know, sometimes Phil will have like 10 or 12 horses in a race. And there's like one that's, you know, <laughs> six to one or higher. And I feel like that's always the horse I want to play. The other Baffert. Right. It's, it's that sort of is. thing. The other, the other D'Amato has become an angle. But it's like the other, other, other D'Amato. <laughs> you know what, though? I, I went back to the barn area today, and Phil, thankfully and luckily, because of the owners he has and the help he has, he moved a lot of horses down here. And I think that will give him a very big advantage when it, rather than just shipping your horse down, running, shipping your horse back. He's down here with a bunch of horses. Um, he's got a bunch of opening de- opening weekend, and uh, I think Phil's going to be tough. I, I really am excited about the return of Flavian Pratt. Um, mm-hmm. It's going right. to be so nice to see Pratt back here, and I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, some other guys have stepped up. You look at a guy like Hector Berrios. You look at Ramon Vasquez, what, he, what those two were able to do at Santa Anita. So I think the colony – is in better shape than it was previously because those guys were able to step up. Obviously you still have Rispoli, you still have JJ Hernandez. Now you add Pratt into the mix. I see Johnny V on a bunch of horses this weekend. Um, All of a sudden the Southern California colony is, is a little bit stronger than maybe it was during the summer. I I feel like it's not like necessarily that it's stronger because we have a lot of the same riders, but because we took Pratt away they got a lot more opportunity. And I agree. while a lot of people are still going to ride Pratt if they can get him, there's other riders now that have stepped up and done well in his absence. So there's going to be calls that are not just dedicated to Flavian. And I think that just them riding with some more confidence because they're like, you know what? When he's not here, I've been winning, you know, tenfold. Right. I think that they'll just feel better about riding and it'll make it more competitive. And they'll I have wins. 
they'll have wins on horses that Pratt would have rode and they'll keep the call too. Don't you think there's going to be some interesting politics in terms of, you know, it's not necessarily going to be like him calling all the shots. I wouldn't think at this point, Michelle. Oh, he's going to call all the shots. Believe me. Yeah. But, oh, really? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. He'll call the shots. But, that, he's that whatever you can better. hide from me. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. He's very good. He's amazing. He's and, um, but you're a hundred percent right. I'll give you a perfect example, Pete. We had a horse, uh, Sunday, we run two horses, uh, one is named Horse Man that's in an allowance race. And Vasquez rode him last time, and he's going to ride him again. But he had another call in there, and we were talking to him. This is what goes on behind the scenes. And we have another horse also in that day, a maiden named Lapeer. And Vasquez rode her as well, and he really wanted to ride Lapeer. So we said, okay, you want to ride Lapeer? Then you're also going to ride Horse Man. And so that kind of had that. That's how that kind of went. Now it's not like he didn't want to ride horse, Gosh, man. How but many he had, cuss words did Billy Castle throw at you after that? He doesn't throw cuss words at me because I just hang up. <laughs> I like so, that we're going so inside baseball on this. It show. really is. It's a lot because it, 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 tr truthfully, Pratt gives also some of us a little leverage uh, in a in a strange way because we're like, hey, we can get Pratt. So if you're not going to ride this horse, sorry, bud. You know, you're out and it, and it, it, it works it, it so far. We'll see if we'll see if I'm still singing Vasquez's praises after Sunday, but <laughs> let's it'll talk be fun. about the JRV factor. I mean, the difference in the way horses are trained now coming out later, getting to the Derby with less experience. I mean, doesn't that smell from a mile away? Like Velasquez might be heading out there to ride some uh, Baffert hot pots or something or horses for the triple crown trail. Do we, is that, is that a reasonable uh, inference, Michelle? Sure. I mean, that's what we saw from him last year, you know, coming out and trying to get on some Baffert horses. And, you know, he's good enough to ride a lot of horses. Um, but I do feel like his style is a little Southern California lacking. We're still very speed heavy and you'll see Johnny waiting to make a move on horses and you'll end up with some, you know, second places and third places that probably could have been wins if you had had a more forwardly placed ride. And you don't want to take a Hall of Famer out of his game necessarily. Um, but I do think that there's a little bit of updating that needs to happen. I said the same thing about Frankie DeTore coming out. Like, first of all, is he going to be riding like 10 claimers or 16 non twos? No, no you sure. know, Right. And then second no, but... of all, his style is going, to, you're going to have to like fall in with what everyone else does and not completely. Like if you're a chilly rider and you're come from behind, okay. But like you can't, come from behind and turn for home at Del Mar and think that you're going to unleash at the top of the lane and catch everybody. Yeah. And I think, I think different riders and Michelle, you just said it have different styles and you have to know what style your horse is. You need to know what kind of rider that horse needs. Mm -hmm. And you also throw into the mix. Um, uh, Kent to coming back. Uh, is it? As we, yep. As you I know, know that. listen, there probably, this is a bold statement, but, there's no more gifted rider than Kent DeSormo. Now, yeah. he's had his issues. We know that. He's been gone for quite some time. But when he's right, he's pretty good on the back of an animal. So um, and so when he comes back, it, like I said, and you got guys like Ricky Gonzalez. Ricky Gonzalez were in, won three races for us last weekend at San Anita, all in wire-to-wire -wire fashion. Kid can ride. But he's, he, he, and he's, he, is he getting pigeonholed as a speed rider? Maybe, but that's what he was up at Golden Gate before he came down to Southern California. J.J. Hernandez has become really consistent and has become a really good rider. He can ride any kind of horse. So I think if you broadcast me at this time last year, knowing maybe you know Pratt was leaving and all this kind of stuff, I would have said this is an absolutely horrid jockey colony. I, I'm actually very pleased when I look at the form for Friday just now, Pete, in my five minutes that I studied for this assignment, um, that there are actually – it's nice. I am kidding. I took 10 <laughs> minutes. But anyway. With the Tory question, when does he arrive? What's the story with that? Oh, so he's gonna he's not gonna be here till the day after Christmas. Okay, uh, opening so not day till for Santa Santa Anita. Anita. He's All gonna right. ride though at uh, Gulfstream before that. Okay, interesting, interesting. There's not too much. There isn't Santa Anita really. But, excuse me, there isn't Gulfstream this year before the day after Christmas. They no, moved their the they moved their dates. So yep. oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. then he's no, going yeah, yeah. to Gulfstream. They open the same day. He's right. going to Gulfstream maybe to do something else. That I'm not sure. I That's mean, the beach is nice. Saying. When we were at Breeders' Cup, he said, I'm going to go to Gulfstream, and then I'm coming to Santa Anita the day after Christmas. Interesting. Well, we'll see how that goes. Before we get into the meat of the races on Friday, I did, you know, we've talked about on the trainer side some 
the the I think if you ask ten people trainers to to keep an eye out on, they'd have mentioned the three that we mentioned between us with uh, you know Baffert Miller and Damato. Is there a trainer at a at a lower profile you guys are looking forward to seeing how they do at this uh, Del Mar meet? Family not included. I think Glatt, I think Glatt does a good job and you know he's got a really good variety of horses so you'll see him from like bottom level claimers up to stakes and I think a vast majority of his horses cannot be ignored um Papa Padromo he'll have horses that are going to be super live um he gets very hot and cold and we'll have the influx of Baltus horses through his barn. And those horses come out super live too. So pay attention to where they're training at. If they're training at San Luis Rey, treat them like a Baltus. Interesting. Yep. Very, I'll give you two cool. names that are interesting that show up on the overnight for opening day. Well, one shows up on opening day. And that's Graham Motion, who's sending out horses to Southern California for the winter. Or at Which least for Delmar. He's done yeah. in the past, and I'm telling you, he's done very well. And Graham mm -hmm. is not only a great trainer, a great person. Um, I would respect him. The the person that impressed me this summer was Andy Mathis. Oh my and god. And I I don't know how many horses he's going to send to Del Mar, but I can tell you that he was unbelievable this summer, winning every like Michelle just said, yeah, every kind of race too. It wasn't just totally cheap horses; it was allowance horses. And uh, I think Andy Mathis does a really, really good job. I'm going to adjust my screen because the sun is just blaring into yeah, you my can face. Do that. Michelle yeah. and I will chat. It's there also washing you out. Okay, that's much yeah. better. That's much, much better. better. Let's talk about a horse that you're looking forward to seeing. Now, this can be one you're associated with. It could be a random horse. It can be. It could be almost anything. But I, but I do want to give the four-legged. Uh, athletes a little bit of a call and then i promise we'll get into the pick four sure. on friday billy we'll start with you any any uh any specific plans you know i there's one horse um over the weekend we had bought into a horse named newgrange that used to be with bob baffert as a three-year-old he went through a private sale i think it was at keeneland i want to say maybe fast again i don't i don't remember uh gary hartunian and rockingham ranch bought him we thought he was interesting and the the funny part about this horse they gave him to phil d'amato we got involved for a small percentage and we were really excited for the summer because we thought he was going to be a turf horse. We were going to turn him into a turf horse. Well, we breezed him over the grass and he could barely stand up. I mean, he was he looked terrible. He was he awful. I mean, it was some of the that. worst breezes I, I think I've ever seen in a horse in my life. And, you know, I'm really close to Phil and we would talk and be like, hey, we can't do this. So then Phil had to kind of switch gears and he ran him in um, a, a stake here, the, the, the shared belief. And he just got completely outrun. Uh, and it was it was very disappointing. And it's one of those horses that you were like, I, I kind of think he's better than this. But, you know, it was a bad situation. Then Phil took his time, really. And if, if you ask Phil what he did, he goes, I just really trained him. I just went for it. I just went balls to the wall every week with this horse. And last week at Santa Anita on a Sunday afternoon that probably no one was watching, he went wire to wire in a very fast time, he ran a two on the thoroughgraph sheets, and um, he's going to come back in the native diver. And he, I think he got a world of confidence that day. He's going to run against older horses that day. But he's one of those horses that if he keeps going on that upward trajectory, he could be an exciting four-year-old next year. I like that idea. Now, Michelle? my question is, I thought that he showed a really vast improvement with the addition of Lasix for the allowance race. So could have been removing the Lasix. I don't I you know, that's one of those things. I'm not a vet and I have no idea. But I do know, Michelle, did you know what they're calling him now? Do you know what his nickname is? Oh, Shamu. 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 He's this He's big so black cute. horse with this totally big white so face. He looks like a killer whale. It's really funny. So uh, <laughs> Shamu. He's got like a sweet eye, but, but he, it, it, he was really impressive this weekend. It's That's really cool. amazing, though, when you literally, if you asked me 10 minutes before that race what was going to happen, I would have said, you know what, I, I don't know. I, who, I have no idea. We're kind of down on the horse. And then all of a sudden he goes, runs like that, and it's like new life. It's yeah. that's what this game will do. That's what it brings. It changes on a dime and it's not always for the good. There's times where you love a horse and we're going to talk about one of those today, actually, in our pick five sequence. And then you're like, how did that happen? How did, it went wrong? So it goes both ways. Give us a horse, Michelle, and then it's time. Uh... Hediac, Hedilac. Oh, Haladic, yeah. Haladic. Haladic's running uh, opening day, and he's in race three. So this is the horse that we had pre-entered for the Breeders' Cup, and he didn't get in um, to the Breeders' Cup turf, Juvenile Turf Sprint. Um, and he comes back in an allowance race, turf sprinting, and looking definitely looking forward to getting him out. 
looking very strong. And that starts the pick six. And then we'll segue neatly to the pick five, which begins in race number four, goes at five o'clock Eastern, according to what I'm seeing over on Timeform US. We've got a $32,000 claimer going six furlongs on the dirt. What numbers will be gracing your tickets, Michelle? So I'm going to go in order of preference, and then you could knock off as you'd like, okay? So I like the one multi-platinum in here for Steve Miotti. He's taking a class class drop down and has run really well versus starter company. Broke the maiden impressively for maiden 40, so 32 non two. I mean, fine. I like the three laughing legacy for Peter Miller. I think the class drop should certainly help him out, and he gets back to Delmar where he broke his maiden. I like the four Bellotti for Michael McCarthy. This horse, though, is very... I don't know. Like he's over six this year. He's had a little, a couple little issues, but overall, I just feel like he might be one of those bridesmaidy types. And he's one of those horses that people are going to want to claim. I kind of want to claim him, but like anytime you claim a horse like this from Mike McCarthy, they don't like go up. They're just like blah all the time. So I don't know. He's kind of like that middle of the road type horse that if I have money, I'll use him. But if not, then I don't know, but an exotic source. And then the six Moroweth for Doug O'Neill ran second against this condition at Delmar previously. His face starters his last two times. Uh, draw a line through his last effort on the grass. He gets back to dirt, which is a preferred surface. Love it. Billy, how wow. about you? Where do you want to go in here? Yeah, uh, very similar opinions in here to Michelle. And when I'm putting together a pick five ticket, I look at the sequence as a whole. So I'm a little bit different than Michelle. I try to say, okay, where am I going deep? Where am I where cutting am I down? Where am I? Where am I going to single? So uh, in this race, I thought this was a, a spread race. Uh, the horses I wrote down were one, three, four, six, eight. Um, my number one would probably be the six more with. Um, if you throw out his turf effort last time against better, uh, he's ran, I'm talking third graph here. He ran back to a paired sevens in his prior uh, two races. I think those are fast enough to get it done in here. If you're looking for a price horse, I did throw in the eight um, Troubadour has a bit of back class, had some really fast numbers way back when. Um, and Diodoro thought enough of him to claim him, brings him back here and gelds him. I lo- I'm a big uh, first time gelding guy. So uh, I went one, three, four, six, eight, kind of deep, but it, the race screams like, Anybody can win it. It's a wide open. Affair. How big of a first time gelding guy are we talking? Do you attend the ceremony and throw them on the roof? Or, I mean, are we just well, talking as about- a gelding myself? Um, I remember, uh, no, it's, uh, I just listen, you know, it, I just think, I think probably more horses should be gelded than, yes, are. Brit I think are always amazed make by great that. Race horses. Yeah, it just Brit, it doesn't Brit make sense. Irish are always ask me why are there so many entires running in the USA, and I have no answer for that. Yeah, because I, people I, think that they're going to be stallions. But yeah, I think I'm it's, gelding. I don't. We don't really want to see that. <laughs> okay, actually. that's enough. You don't that, want to see? I don't want to have to no. put a content warning no. on this video. Yeah, Get this that is out of here. Please turn that off. Yeah, I'll watch so you throwing anyway, them on the roof. One, th- one, three, four, six, eight. I think that gets you through this race. Race number five is a starter allowance going one mile on the turf. Billy Cox, keep on the it with you. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um, very similar to the last race. I, I really think this starter is wide open, and you can make a case for a lot of the horses. The ones I wrote down were one, four, six, nine, ten. Um, in code is interesting to me. Shifting from Baffert to Yachtin had one start last time. I thought that was actually a really good race. Savile Row is a nice horse and this horse does a completely different thing tries two turns tries the grass and when you're talking about eight to one and you get jj hernandez that's an interesting play for me because it's one of those i i kind of know what these other horses are i'm not sure what he is i like that price um i like the way uh kazu kazu kazuhiko uh broke his maiden last time for 50 for peter and i'm not a big fan of first time against winners um so you that's with him and the eight uh, percolate, but I thought I thought Kazuhiko ran really well last time, um, and I think a nice price is the is the six. Quiz, this is going to be an interesting race. Tis Quantum, um, he's run two really good races. I know they were a long time apart. He has run here. He did win at Del Mar. He broke his maiden here for fifty um, back in August, and I just think at the price again eight to one. So I spread. Uh, one, four, six, nine, ten. I'm not going to leave Pratt and Phil D'Amato off my ticket. Fair enough. Spready to start this pick five from Billy. We'll bring in Michelle Yu to set us straight. 
For me, Pete, it's seven nine eight six one. Love the pedigree on Intoast. <laughs> I again. love it. Let's so let's have her show. She, she cut it half down, and she just reeled so, okay, off the so half my, the field. So Billy talked about most of these, and so I'll just ditto what he said. I like Petruccio. He didn't mention Petruccio in here. Yeah. yeah. He was, uh, picked up for 32, non two, two back. He came against starters last time at going a mile on the turf, just like he's going to do here. I thought the horse that beat him time to party looked fabulous that day. That horse has a ton of back class. They're actually running him back in the, um, in the stake, let it ride stake. Yeah. So the fact that he drew the rail came up and still made a run late, I thought was really good for Petruccio. So I'm, I went ahead and used Petruccio as my yeah. selection here. You can use him. You can throw him in. <laughs> You have, throw him in you have Billy's permission, Michelle. I got room. It's clearly a spready race, given the, yeah. the array. Yeah, of so I used okay, so I liked seven, nine, eight, six on top, and you mentioned the six. You mentioned the eight. Did you talk about Flintstroll? I, I just said I'm not leaving Phil and and Pratt off my ticket. Like I just okay. think that's that would be I mean, not smart. Squiggle a line through his last race. He's obviously a better horse than that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what happened last time. Top. Yeah, I don't know what happened last time. I can't tell yeah. you. Feels I like even, if you're spreading, I, you wouldn't want to get beat by. No, and I, you know, I, I even like the ten. I mean, I have the ten on my ticket at twelve to one. You get Ramon Vasquez. You get first time Reed Saldana. Reed Saldana is twenty seven percent off the claim. Um, doesn't get a lot of attention, but he goes from Eddie Truman to Reed Saldana. Of course, didn't run bad. Um, tougher company this time around. He, he was in a non two life race last time. Does draw the outside, but he doesn't doesn't have blazing speed. He should be able to save some ground. That this is a wide open race. There is no question. If you can all this race, if you can afford it, do it. Let's talk about race number six. Maybe we can get a little narrow, though. I'm not too sure. Taking a quick look through it, we've got this cow bread allowance race going one mile on the dirt. And Michelle, it's your turn to start us off. All right, so my top pick in here would be the eight Leia's Candy for Mark Glatt. Broke the maiden two back, and then last time out, I thought ran really well. He's going to be trying a route of ground, which we hadn't seen from him. But as I like to say, Steve Miati told me once, um, you can fool any horse one time that they want to go long, First even time. if they really don't. So I like him. He's shown speed going short, and he's shown the ability to rate last time out. So for me, Leia's Candy on top. If I was looking at more horses by Try not to be too expensive. I would look at Billy's horse, the five atomic drop, although I don't know why they keep running him long because he's obviously better short. And the 10, 11 sushi. Those, that, those owners don't know what they're doing. Mm -mm. Who, uh, who was first time versus winner. So that kind of turns me away. But I like the fact that his last three races have been really good. So they've, they've kind of found a good level with him. Um, he broke his maiden special weight. Uh, he finished behind Leia's candy. So if you're getting him at a big price discrepancy, possibly look at but he does tick a negative box for me in the first time versus winners but eight and five in, in the main for for michelle here in in race number six billy tell us what you can about atomic drop how confident yeah, are you? it's it's interesting i'll tell you everything i i would in my ticket i'm going to single atomic drop and that's why it allowed me to go deep in the other races this horse the last time was a massive disappointment he was three to five he got an easy lead and for whatever reason he got beat he just he didn't run bad but he did not run up to expectations i thought he was an absolute standout that day i thought he was a lock i have no idea what happened it, we've always thought from the start of this horse's career that he was going to go one. long yeah he could go long i mean if you see him he doesn't look like a sprinter he's big mm -mm. tall long he's by mucho macho man he looks like the horse and he just continues to fool us and in fact the truth of the matter is we weren't planning on running him till the end of the meet there's a cow bread sprint towards the end of the meet and he put in two works after this race at um santa anita at los al he was working at los al and both works were just outstanding i mean five furlong works with a huge gallop out and phil said we're just we're gonna enter him and i was like really i thought we were gonna go back to sprinting and he goes i just don't believe it i just don't believe he can't get two turns i i, I am after tomorrow we're going to know because this race truly sets up for him because you have so many of the horses many of whom michelle mentioned that are first time stretching out and and they're gonna hit that quarter pole and go oh shoot we still have another you know quarter mile to go whereas atomic drop whether he can get it or not he's not probably not going to be on the lead in this spot he might get a nice tracking trip and he might inherit the lead and try you know change something different we also cut back the blinkers a little bit um in this particular instance um that was Cedillo's suggestion said he didn't need him he wants to see you know a little bit of the other horse he's a strange horse he kind of runs with his head cocked sideways michelle maybe you could tell us what that means i don't know but um 
this is his last chance and we think he's better than he's shown. So I'm going to go ahead and single him. And hopefully the people watching this will not um, get on Twitter later and later and bash me after he loses. <laughs> well, you know, if, if they, you're nobody till somebody loathes you keep that in mind. What about yes. that question, Michelle, the, the head carriage, mm-hmm. the sideways head carriage, what in your experience does that mean? I mean, it could be such such a number of things. It could just be a quirk from when he was young that was never corrected. Maybe he was never taught to go in like a proper frame. He could have had an ailment along the way, even if it was just like something in his mouth that bugged him. And so he's been trying to evade the bit or something. I mean, there could still be like a wolf tooth in there or like an impaction in his mouth that's bothering him. He could have like an abscess in a tooth. Um, that you know you wouldn't mes- maybe necessarily find out unless you were like doing like a deep dental dive. Um, he could just miss like the bit. He could there could be the rider hanging on him in the morning that's making him do this. I mean, there's I so know, many yeah. things that it could be. He without, doesn't really like, do it as much in the mornings, which mornings? is weird. Yeah. So do they change his bit in the afternoons. I don't. You, do you want me to? You want to call no. Phil? <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> I don't we know. Could like 12 people in the stream yard. Wait, wait. I have on. Phil. Wait, Phil D'Amato just texted me. Hold on. I'm going to ask him ask while him we're about doing the head Why we'll start does the comic race. drop run with his head sideways? <laughs> I'm on a Like, pod. for example, it's not uncommon. Like, Brad Cox trains a lot of horses in a gag bit, which is like a polo bit, and it gives more pressure behind the ears and it gives the rider a little bit more leverage because you're pulling down from the pole rather than just in the mouth, which can get a little numb the pressure but on a race day situation you don't run in that so they always go back to a ring bit or whatnot um so you can right. see them acting a little bit differently than they do in the mornings interesting that that makes sense that that makes absolute sense we i could go down this rabbit hole but we don't have yeah, enough no, time we'll, we'll we'll see when phil gets back to us yeah we'll see, see what, what he got. says yeah meanwhile we have to talk about our featured race and it has just a brilliant name it's got a hollywood name so you know who i'm going to call on first in this one the let it ride stakes We'll bring in our own Mr. Hollywood, Billy Koch, to tell us. Now, do you guys know that my grandfather was the producer on Let It Ride? I, I, yes. I was setting you up to say. No. And did you know that I was there at Hollywood Park when they were filming? And I told my grandfather, I'd always, I was a little kid and I wanted to run around the racetrack. And <laughs> he looked at me and Joe Pitka was there, the director. And he looked at me and they said, go ahead. <laughs> and I made it like 200 Did you yards. Make it all the way? <laughs> I, no, like 200 yards. I was like, this is ridiculous. I'd have to look when Let It Ride was made. I'm assuming it was like late 80s. Yeah, mid late 80s. Uh, oh my god! But anyway, that's um, fantastic. Yeah, so I singled in the last. I went deep, deep single. So I have a little bit of room here in this race, and I think um, my top selection would probably be Handy Dandy. Um, his two races before uh, the Twilight Derby were really, really strong. I think last time he didn't have a great trip. He lacked room. If you look in the forum comments, um, uh, goes back to JJ Hernandez, who had ridden him the two times before. He gets seven to two on the morning. I draw a nice inside post. I like Handy Dandy the best. Uh, my two other selections in here would be St. Anthony the six gets Pratt for the first time, ran in a grade two Hill Prince last time, um, didn't run all that bad. Neil Drysdale puts blinkers on. He's four to one on the morning line. My other kind of price horse, I like his sheet is clutch hitter, the one. Uh, it has faced winners one time. I'm not a huge Sheriff's Espinosa fan, um, but in this particular instance, he goes 15-9-6. He was defeated by Handy Dandy, and I, sometimes, you know, when you like a horse, you like Handy Dandy, this horse comes out of the same race. He hasn't run since that allowance race this summer. I think you're going to get a big price, and I think if you're Singling a horse like Atomic Drop, who's three to one, that's probably what he's going to be. And if you catch favorites, you're going to want someone on your ticket that's going to allow you to to cash. And I think this is, to me, draws inside. I think this is a horse that could cash here at a big price. I think he's, you're going to get every bit of six to one, if not looking, more. Looking at pace figures, I could definitely see Clutch Hitter getting the right kind of setup in right. the situation from that inside draw. Michelle, you who do you like in the feature? So my top pick is Handy Dandy. We have been on the backside of him on multiple occasions. I'm a big fan of Handy Dandies. Um, If I'm going to use additional horses, I would put in the five script for Graham Motion, who's coming off an allowance win at Keeneland, uh, second off the layoff for him. Um, So I like him. And I thought Spy Catcher was interesting, but I'm afraid he's just going to get, like, played too much for a maiden. I agree. I agree. He's like two to one. He's got a fast number. Playing as a maiden just because he ran second in the – Delmar Derby. 
you see this all the time, right, Michelle, where horses run as maidens above and then they run really, really good. And then they kind of get stuck there because you're yeah. like, oh, should we run in a maiden race or we look right. good in the stake? And you kind of get stuck and stuck and stuck and stuck. And then you're like, OK, we need to go break your maiden. Um, right. I think horses do need to win at some point. Mark Loud is obviously a very good trainer, a very smart guy. They must think very highly of this horse. So um, and script Stone Farm, good friend, good friend of uh, of of ours. We bought there horses from her. Um, Lots going on on this Del Mar yeah, opening so, day card. It definitely. concludes in race number eight, seven o'clock Eastern. We've got tricky ones sometimes, these maiden claiming 20s, Phillies and mares, three and up, five and a half on the dirt. Michelle, we ask you the key question. How are we going to get paid? So for me, I'm going to look to the two horse in here to try to get paid sugar, sugar for Steve Knapp. Last time out, got to the front and then got caught. I think backing up to the five and a half is probably exactly the spot that she wants to be in. Now, to be fair, she's run five and a half on three occasions and she hasn't yet graduated at that particular distance. But um, I thought that she, you know, looked good last time for Steve, first time out of his barn. And so I'm going to I'm going to depend on her to get me through. Um, if I was going to add other horses, it would be the one worthiness for Hector Palma and then the outside horse golden halo for val brinkerhoff off the turn back in distance because she has also run second going five and a half before two on sort of the top line with the one and the ten on the second line um billy what about you yeah How, no you i I, this thing out? I chalked out here and i think it's probably a bad play i think you have to choose worthiness or sugar sugar and yeah. in the old days I, I just I put them both. The I just said, yeah, I said one, two on my ticket, which ended up being $75 or a little more. If you want to add more horses in the race where I said to just take all. And, um, but I think I, I like worthiness a little bit better than sugar, sugar for the Ooh. points that Michelle made, because she just seems to stop. And even though she looks like the speed of the speed, I've seen this Del Mar main track, um, have horses get real late and i think worthiness is actually going to be in a pretty good spot when they turn for home most likely saving ground and here's the truth if i played just sugar sugar worthiness for sure would run her down late and i would lose um so sometimes i just have to not even handicap and just go which one are you most likely to play that would have been sugar sugar so i would say worthiness on top of sugar sugar uh, that's late. the pick six but i'm going to keep you guys for like at least three more minutes pick five, before... pick five. Pick five. Well, we sort of did on, the pick six because we had your horse in the first race. Yeah, we had Halatic. We have a single. So I, I, I was thinking that it was the pick six, but you're right. We spent right. much more time on the pick five. So fair comment. But I have some lifestyle questions. We did that really fun lifestyle show mm. for the summer meet. We got a lot of great feedback on it. We're obviously not going to go too far in this direction. The first question I'm going to ask you, though, just pure selfishness, because I just booked my travel to be at Del Mar, um, Bing Crosby meet. For closing weekend and the, the flight i got i'm going to be arriving in san diego airport at 8 30 p.m at night in the old mm. days i could have caught the last call of food at bullies that's not an option anymore <laughs> i thought you'd like that oh, we're good. late night bullies. dining give me something don't tell me i have to go to denny's is there something late night no, Where? I would not even go late night. I would, Michelle, you're going to love this. I think you go right from the airport to Little Italy and you just, oh. you, 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 you go find a spot oh, there. Look at, yeah, go exactly. They got great Actually, bar what scenes. We ate lunch at the other day. Benicato? What? In, in Little Italy? In Little Italy. And they'll be open. Two years. Two years that ago, was we had lunch. that was Benicotto. That was Benicotto, I think. That's where I would go. Yeah, that yeah. place is unbelievable. And they got, right they, and, and yeah, Barbusa is there as well. Pete, look up Little Italy. They have great bars. You could probably just walk. You don't even have a reservation. You can go in. You can mm -hmm. eat at the bar, meet some people. And yeah. it's it's very close to the airport. Rather than come all the way to Del Mar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're totally you know, right. I mean, you could still, you have you to look. You can go to the Brig. The Brig will be yeah, open for late Yeah, you can go to the Brig. Evening. You can go to Pomplamoose and sit at the bar. If you're Are you coming on a Sunday? Because they have the spaghetti and meatballs. Jeffrey Strauss will make the most amazing spaghetti and meatballs you've ever had. I'm and, coming uh, in on a are, Friday. I'm coming in for the weekend, and then I go to the, the you could go, in Tucson. You could go to Brig. You could go to Crust and get a slice of pizza and sit at the bar and have a beer oh, and watch watch. Crust the, is so good. Yeah, Crust is really I good. I was worried everything Beach. stopped serving at like 9 30. No, no, oh, okay. no. Even if it no. did, Pete, you're 30, not even 30 minutes in the airport, unless you're checking like 100 bags and flying. And if like you're, if you're wearing a tight t shirt like that, you're yeah. going to be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
fine. <laughs> the other question I wanted to ask you is a new place. You know, we did all the places in this summer. I want to know a place you discovered that you went to or fell in love with for the first time this year. Or are you both such creatures of habit that you're going to punt this question right back in my face? Um, probably I found a great massage place. That easy, works. Give us easy that. Easy tiger. Easy okay, tiger. So it's called Siam Royal Thai Massage. And it's like the legit Thai massage Ooh. where like the lady walks on your back and has awesome. like your oh legs up goodness. here and like uh 10 of 10 recommend. The show is Not rated PG, Michelle. It's Solana Beach. After, okay. after the gelding pictures, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, we're yeah. going to have to stick a 13 on the PG, if yeah. not a full-on R. But you, Billy, you just went to all the you same know, places, nothing I new? Go, yeah, I am a total creature of habit. I will go to Pomplamoos. I will go to Ken Sushi. Um, I actually, you know, I used to love the two Mexican places, um, Fidel's and Tony Jacal's, Tony Jacal's, however you want to say it. But right over here in Del Mar, this place, um, Tamarindo, Michelle, have you been there? The little it oh, right in the mall. No, I haven't. It's really good. It's really good food. It's not as um, I would say like authentic Mexican food as you would get at like Fidel's, but it's really, really good. It's super convenient. It's right here in town. It's a good place. But I, I go to the same places. I go yeah. to the Brig um, for fish tacos. I go to Board and Brew to get a sandwich. I go to Ken Sushi for sushi, and I go to the Papa Moose to get a beautiful, real it. meal from Jeffrey Strauss. So we we might have to get a Ken's. We might have to get it. We we, we got to figure this out. Does in the money say, wait? Does in the money have like a, a? Is there an in the money credit card? Do we, we have one get, of those? Given what our business manager accomplished last weekend, maybe he'll buy us some. Yeah, that would be great. Maybe he'll buy us dinner. Yeah, you know? so, fantastic. So I, I think when are you coming in? What's the date? I'm coming in, gosh, I, I think it's it... the 2nd of December. It's whatever oh, that the last Friday weekend. Is. That's perfect. Yeah. Last weekend. So be, yeah, great. It should be super fun. And, you All know, right, we'll I, do something fun. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you guys more about Del Mar throughout this Bing Crosby meet. Michelle, do you have a closing word for us before I send this thing home? No. No closing word. All right. I'll say, can I just give a quick, some quick promos then real quick? Of um, course. So That's the kind of thing I was trying to set you up is... for. Billy and I will be back for Beach Boss every Saturday at 11 o'clock. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, in case, just in case you love watching Billy kick everybody's ass. Uh, and then second of all, I want to draw attention to Colmus Calls for Karma. So it's going to be a special promotion run during Del Mar. It's 100 bucks a ticket and all 100% of the proceeds go to Karma. And you can come and you can meet Larry Colmus. You can go up in the announcer's booth and pepper him with as many questions as you can in between races. Watch him call a race live and have like a photo op and everything. And then you get like a box for the day and blah, 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 all like the good stuff, but really cool add on that I don't think has been available before. And obviously it, it, it hasn't, it was actually Michelle, it was Larry's idea. He brought it to me and he, um, he used to do it at Saratoga. So they used oh, to do dude. it on like, yeah, they used to do it on, I, I don't remember what he said. Maybe Mondays was, and, and he said it was very successful. People really enjoyed it and he enjoyed it. He wants to meet people and be a part of the community and, and give That's back awesome. in, in the way he can. So it'd be great for people to sign up. You can do it on the uh, Del Mar website. D DMTC.com, the, the yep. URL over there. We encourage you to be playing Del Mar these uh, November and into December weekends. We're going to be covering the meet thoroughly here on the In The Money Media Network. Michelle, you actually I pointed the wrong way. Now, we're just going to do this. Michelle. No, I still can't do it. The reverse gets me. Michelle, Billy, really appreciate you. Appreciate our friends over at Del Mar. I'm Peter Thomas Fornital. May you win all your photos. <laughs>